Okay. Everybody get one? Okay. No. All right. Got a lot of ground to cover today. We're going to get into step three. When did you get here? Way in the back. Come on, come bring your chair. Come on up here. If somebody asked you, if somebody asked you, what makes up self? What would you say? Uh, say yeah. Say I. I don't. I don't have, have a clue. A clue. <laughs> now, how many of y'all know more about computers, iPods, uh, cars, hunting, than you know about your own damn yeah, self? What we're gonna talk on today? If you don't get a grip on this, there's no way in hell. You'll be able to practice those steps daily in your life. And nothing will change. Nothing. Now, normal people, whatever the hell that is, could benefit from what we're going to talk on today. Now, how many of y'all sort of think this is the worst thing that could ever happen to you to end up in treatment? I'm telling you, us alcoholics, or with some of this stuff we're going to talk about today, can live better than most people ever dream. Now, how many of y'all come in here, and the first and foremost thing on your mind changing is the using part? Because that's why you think you're here. Now, how many of y'all, every time y'all get jammed up by the legal system, by family, by friend, by employer, by finances. Every time you get jammed up, how many of y'all got? I gotta quit using. Because that's what you think it is. And every time you quit, what do you do? Start back. You start again. And it always gets worse. Every time. Now, how many of y'all? have burned up a lot of energy foolishly trying not to use. I mean, y'all have spent a lot of money moving and changing friends and changing this and that. If you would have took all that energy and resources and applied it to changing you, guess what you wouldn't want to do? Use. Use. It's like you really don't really understand what the hell is going on. You know something is, but you really don't get it. Now, how many of y'all have tried this over and over and over and over? Every time you do, you fall on your fat on your face, and it keeps getting worse. worse. Now, what we're going to talk on today, what we're going to talk on today, if you don't get a grip on this today, there's no way you can do those steps. There's no way. Now, every human being that's ever been put on the face of this earth, from Adam to the last baby born, we're all made exactly the same. And nobody is better than and nobody is worse than. We are all made exactly the same. Now, I know some of y'all have been floating around ideas about me. You don't know me. You know nothing about me. All you know is what you get in here. You have no idea what I do out in the real world. And if we ever meet in the real world, I promise you, you would have a whole different opinion. But what you have to remember, I've got a lot of people I'm responsible for. See, when your people send you here, they put you in my hands. Now, believe it or not, 
I care what happens to each and every one of y'all. And I know what happens to people like me who don't get this. And it's not fun. So, therefore, <clears throat> I try to make sure you get the right information. You don't have to like me. This isn't a popularity <clears throat> contest. Okay? But what you will do when you leave here is know what to do. And if you choose to do it, that would be on you. And if you choose not to, that would be on you. Okay? Okay. Now, before we get into this, you got to be able to tie some things together. Now, this program, it boils down to two things. It boils down to being powerless, and it boils down to tapping into some power. That's what this program boils down to. Now, unless your middle name is Houdini, there's no way you can be in two places at the same time. Now, if you hear, you could not possibly be here. And if you hear, you couldn't possibly be here. Now, if you're sitting in here, except for the accepting of this young lady, you ain't here. Because if you was, you wouldn't be here. Now, what makes a person like me powerless? There's two things. Part of this thing centers in the body, and part of it centers in the mind. Now, the physical part that we're talking about is what they refer to as the allergy. Now, what's your first name? Perry. Perry, what's your first name? Ron. Where are you from, Ron? Glad. Where? Glad. Where are you from, Perry? Glad. Damn. What you been using? I don't know. What kind? Whiskey. What brand? Vodka. Whiskey ain't vodka. <laughs> it's different colors. Well, what you been using? Heroin. What's your first name? What you been using? What's your first name? Matt? Oh, hell, I know what you've been using. been shooting heroin in my house, or What's your first name? Courtney, what you been using? What's your first name? What you been using? What's your first name? What? Kate, how old are you? About nine? Huh? Same thing. Nine and 19 are the exact same thing. Where are you from? What you been using? Are you sure? <laughs> Whether you're shooting it, snorting it, smoking it, shoving it up your rear end. <laughs> How many of y'all, every time you dump the first one in, this allergy in the body sets off a physical craving. Your body takes over and your body demands you put a second one in. When you put the second one in, the craving doubles, which your body demands. You put the third one in. Now, how many of y'all, once you start, it's pretty much on. You're going to go and go and go like the Energizer Bunny until you run out, pass out, get locked up, or somebody stops you. Now, when you get going, the end result is one of these, a well-known spree. Now, how many of y'all have come up off a bad spree before and sang the Alcoholics National Anthem? Never I'll never do that shit again. again. But, hey, hey, I don't need an echo. Hey, there was a weed eaters. Okay? Just, just listen. Now, how many of y'all in here, every time you dump the first one in, this is the end result. 
And every time you come up off a of bad one, you swear to everybody, including yourself, I am done. So you start to live in your own skin for a couple of hours, a couple of days, which is miserable as shit. So this thing starts working on you, the obsession in the mind. And the mind tells you, hey, I need some damn relief. Because at that point, you probably do. So based on the obsession, you reach over and put the first one back in. And every time you put the first one back in, this bitch goes on vacation for a little while, but you set the physical part off. You set the allergy off, it produces the craving, and you back off to the races again. And you just keep repeating this shit over and over and over and over. Now, you can't stay stopped because of the obsession. And once you start, you cannot control how much you're going to use because of the allergy. These two things combined render you. Now, if you're powerless, it's going to take a power greater than you to solve this point. Because if you could have solved it, there's no way you would have come spent 28 days with me. There's no way. Now, how does somebody like me tap into the power? There's two ways. Part of it is getting involved in the fellowship in Alcoholics Anonymous. And the other way is by taking the 12 steps. That's the program. Now, the program and the fellowship are two entirely different things. You've got to be able to understand how different they actually are. One of them is in the meetings, and one of them is in the first 103 pages of the big book. Now, the fellas going to these meetings, what it does gives me a lot of support. But the meetings, if you have that little issue going on, are not enough. The real power comes as a result of taking the step, like the book says, and this is what will take place. A change. Now, how do I tap into the power? Get involved in the fellowship, and I take the steps. Now, this is what we're going to talk about a lot today is these two things, okay? Now, I promise you, if you're just coming in here, okay, we're going to talk about <coughs> this a lot. But today, we got some bigger fish to fry. We got to get moving, okay? Now, this program boils down to two things. Who can tell me what those two things are? Power less and uh, power. Now, if I am here and I want to get here, something's blocking me. Raise your hand if you know what's blocking you from the power. What? So, look, how many of y'all in here right now know right from wrong? I, I guarantee everybody sitting in here knows right from wrong. You know how I know that? Because you're born with that fundamental idea of God deep down within you that tells you right from wrong. How many of y'all? Wake up. Don't sleep in my class. Do not do that. Okay? No, I say okay? Okay. Now, how many of y'all know right from wrong? Every time you get ready to do something and you know it's wrong, how many of y'all hear a little voice and it says, hey, dumbass, don't do that. 
Now, if it's something you really, really want to do, how many of y'all block that voice out and do what you want to do? Now, when you do what you want to do, no one is wrong. Do you usually face consequences? And when the consequences start hitting, how many of y'all hear a second voice louder than the first one that says, I told you not to do that. Now, normal people, whatever the hell that is, my father, 89 years old, he's one of those normal people. And about 99.9% of the time, he does what's right. Now, us alcoholics, we got three things. See, normal people have two, what's right and what's And they most of the time do what's right. Now, us alcoholics got three things. We got what's right, what's wrong, and in the middle, what the hell I want to do. And what I want to do gets me in all kinds of trouble. So if I can get what I want to do out the damn way, guess what ain't no biggie for me? Right and wrong. Now, I asked this young man here what makes up self. And he was about to tell me everything except what I asked him. Now, how many of y'all, the truth is you have no idea about self? Now, if you look at that paper I gave you, every human being from Adam to the last baby born were all made exactly the same. Nobody's better than, and nobody is worse than. Now, this self is made up of three basic instincts. Everybody has a social instinct. Everybody has a security instinct. And everybody has a sex instinct. Now, everything you do, both good and bad, is based on one of those instincts. Now. The easiest way to remember, when Young Gun starts to draw Social Security, he'll have no more sex. <laughs> I'm hoping that's a lie because I'm close. Now, the easiest way to remember, Social Security, sex. When you start drawing Social Security, you'll have no more sex. Now, it's Finally, you understand the three basic instincts. <clears throat> now, everything that you do, both good and bad, is based on you trying to satisfy one of these instincts. Now, human beings, we are the only creatures on the face of this earth that God gave the <coughs> instincts to plus this. See, other creatures, dogs, cats, lions, tigers, bears, they got these instincts, but they're directed by God's will. God directs their instincts. How many of y'all have ever saw a flock of geese, ducks, fly? How many of y'all have ever been out to help? They got a bunch of geese out there. Geese are dumb ass animals. They eat and shit everywhere. They're dumb animals. But geese can fly 6,000 miles in the winter south, stay for a couple of months and fly back. Dumb ass animals. You know why they can do that? God directs them. Now, if you ever watch them fly, they fly in a V. When the lead goose gets tired, it peels to the back of the V, and another one steps right in this place. They don't land and go, hey, who, who's fucking going to lead us now? They do it just like, because God directs there. Now, 
God forbid if all of us said, let's walk the back room. <laughs> when we got to the front door, this would kick in and ruin everything. See, about a half of y'all would go, we got to go left. About a third of y'all would go, uh-uh, right. And the rest of you geniuses would go, uh-uh, straight. Now, how come it is some dumb animals can fly 6,000 miles, stay for a couple of months, and fly back? And intelligent ass men couldn't walk the Baton Rouge together. Not just self will, but self will run riot. You gotta get something clear. There's nothing wrong with self will. Self will is a gift <coughs> from God. So it has to be good. Now, how many of y'all have ever turned on a TV? <coughs> And you turn to the news station, at the bottom it says, breaking news, 100,000 tigers have went to war with 100,000 elephants. How many of y'all have ever heard that? No. Nobody. Because God directs their instincts. Now, have you ever heard of 100,000 men going to war with another hundred thousand. You know why? Self will run and we blame that shit on. Now, why did God give human beings self will? The ability to think, choices, and decisions. Because he loved us creatures, humans, more than any other creature on the face of this earth. And he wanted us humans to be the dominant species. Now, how many of y'all have taken this gift that God has given you and run it in the ground? You do what you want, when you want, how you want. When shit is the fan, you blame God. He's going. <laughs> now, if every human being has these instincts, that means everybody is pretty much like me, and I'm just like everybody. So if I can start to understand what makes me tick a little bit, I can start to understand what makes you tick. And if I understand what makes me tick, and you pretty much like me, I can start to get along better with people. And I need people in this world. Now, how many of y'all sitting in here, you get ready to do something wrong. You hear that little voice say, hey man, don't, don't do that. How many of y'all hear that? Now, how many of y'all, when it's something you really, really want to do, you block that voice out and do what you want to do. And when you do what you want to do, knowing it's wrong, do you face consequences? And when the consequences start hitting, how many of y'all hear that voice a second time louder and says, you dumbass, I told you not to do that. Now, do you hear that voice? Yeah. What do you call it? Who said conscience? That's what most people call it. I will prove to you it's not your conscience. I'll prove it to you. The first time you hear that voice say, hey man, don't do that, is it always been right every single time? So that right there in itself proves it ain't your fucking conscience. Because there's only one entity in this universe that's always right 100% of the time, and that's the fundamental idea of God. Now, when you block that voice out and do what you want, that's your conscience. And that's why you have ended up in here. Now, again, if I can get what I want to do out the way, that voice I hear that first time, 
it gets loud and clear and I actually start to listen to it. Now, how many of y'all in here, you have these ideas and these beliefs about everything? Now, I want you to ask yourself this question. Your ideas and your beliefs, how well are they working for you? Unless when you were in kindergarten physically, you stood up in front of the class and said, hey, teach. When I grow up, I want to be a patient at Woodlake. <laughs> if you said that, this is what I would tell you. Don't change a damn thing. It's working. But none of y'all said that. Or wait, let me, or did y'all? Did you say that? Did you? Now guess where you are? A patient at. So what you're doing, what you're doing, what you're doing, it ain't work. Now, when you hear that first voice tell you, hey, hey man, don't do that. Where do you hear it from? No, where do you hear that voice? But where does it come from? Okay, so it comes from within you, right? Now, how many of y'all say God's everywhere? Well, you better get up. You're sitting on his ass. <laughs> How many of think God is up in heaven on this cloud? Look, look, let, let me ask you this. Your ideas, your beliefs about God, how well are they working for you? If they were working, you know where you wouldn't be sitting? Here. So if you keep the same ideas, and the same fixed beliefs, you're going to get the same result and worse. Now, I want everybody in here to turn their big book to page 55. Look, look. Look, we're, we're not we're not going to go through this every week. I want you guys to listen to this. You cannot come in this room ever, never again without your big book. If you do, there's going to be consequences. Now, where is your book? Where is your book? They never gave you one? Where's your book? Who else doesn't have their book? Go get me three big books. I don't care where you get them. Tell Josh to give you three. I need them now. All right, on page 55, you follow along with him, you follow along with him, and you follow along with him too. Y'all do something y'all don't know nothing about. That's shared. 55, that's five and five, 55. The first paragraph down, it says, actually, we were fooling ourselves. Imagine that shit. For deep down, and every man, woman, and child is the fundamental idea of God. Now, it says, it may be obscure, what does obscure mean? Yeah. It, it wow. means blah. Here you go. It means blah. By what? Calamity, pomp, and worship of other things. But in some form or another, it is there. there. Now, shut your books. Look up here. <laughs> when it comes to where God actually is, how many of y'all have never looked there? You look everywhere. You look in relationships. You look in money. You look in drugs and alcohol. You look everywhere for God except where he actually is. Now, this little voice that tells me right from wrong, it just told you every man, woman, and child has it. You're born with it. 
You're born with the fundamental idea of God deep down within you. Now, I've got a little 16-month-old daughter. And when you sort of understand self and these instincts, and you watch one of them start coming up, you go, golly. Now, she's 16 months old. And as long as she's been able to crawl around, she's known right from. Because every time she goes to get into something, I go, hey, don't do that. And she'll go, away. Not like some of y'all did. And she'll wait for me to walk off to make sure I'm not watching and try again. again. You know why she does that? She knows right from, can't even fucking talk. Guess what you know? Right from wrong. And you've been knowing. Now, where's one place that you've never looked? When I asked you, when you hear that voice, I said, where do you hear it from? You said, it's not wrong. But how many of y'all, when that first voice tells you, hey, man, don't do that, it's coming from deep down within you. You don't hear it from the sky, do you? Because if you do, we got to get you to another facility. <laughs> now, where's one place you've never looked? Now, how do I get self out the way so I can tap into this power. Steps four through nine. Those steps allow me to look somewhere I've never looked. And that's deep down within myself. And if you ever take these steps, like the book says, you're going to look somewhere you've never looked. How many times do you start to get a glimpse of your real self and you go, that shit. <laughs> Been good money to perfect that sound. Now, <laughs> if I can get what I want to do out the way, again, guess what's not a biggie for me? Right from wrong. Now, how many of y'all have ever heard of Adam? and Eve, and the Garden of Eden. I'm going to give you the drunk version. Now, when God created everything, he said it took him about seven days. He works quick. So God creates everything. He's got all these creatures in the garden. He says, I'm going to make something in my image. So he made man. So I'm going to give man some companionship. So he made woman. They say that's when the damn problem started. Now, Adam and Eve are the only two human creatures in the garden. And they fit in with all the other creatures. It's the best it's ever been. There was no crime, no pollution, no nothing. Best it's ever been. Now, what did God tell Adam and Eve? Look. You got the damn run in a place. Just don't eat the damn apple. Now, Adam and Eve rock along in the garden. Guy made. This little snake comes slivering by. Goes up to Eve and says, Hey, Eve, you and Adam have. Y'all not like us other creatures. Matter of fact, y'all can do what y'all want. Y'all go eat the apple. And Eve tells the little snake, well, no, God said we couldn't. Little snake says, Eve, I'm telling you, y'all not like us. God gave y'all. Y'all can do what y'all want. So Eve runs back and tells Adam. She says, Adam, 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 Adam. We got self-will. We can eat you out. So what did they do? They ate the damn apple. Now, God comes trucking along in the garden. He sees the apple missing. He was shocked. He goes, Adam, who ate the damn apple? 
Adam says, well, well, we did. I said, Adam, why did you do that? He points at Eve and says, she made me do it. Now, that's the first time man ever exerted. Now, what happened to him? They, God, look, the long story is God banned him from the garden. But before God banned him, he made a deal with him. He said, hey, if you ever want to give this back to me, I will take you back with open arms. He made the same deal with you and you and you and you. Now, how do I get self out of Kevin's hand back where it belongs in the care of God's hand? How do I keep it out of my hand? Look, guys, this shit ain't about drinking and drugging. It's about learning how to live. And if you learn how to live, you won't want to. That's why when I see some of y'all in here, and I try to sort of correct you and help you, and you go, I don't know why he's picking on me. You ain't that special. <laughs> You're not that different. I'm trying to help you when you get out of here. Because look, if you can't do some simple shit in here, what makes you think you're going to be able to do it out there? Now, everything that we're going to do in this program, Everything you're going to do for the rest of your life is going to hinge on one or more of these instincts. Everything I do, both good and bad, is based on me trying to satisfy one of these instincts. Now, how many of y'all, when y'all come in here, I ask you, are you a true believer in God? What did most of y'all tell me? Are you? Huh? That will require an answer. Are you? Yeah. Yeah. You? Yeah, that's what y'all say out of y'all's damn mouth. What your actions say. You are or you not. Okay. Now, look, I don't know if this is a true believer or not. But do I look like I go in that building on Sunday and sing in the choir and shit? No, I don't. Does that make, do you have to do that to be a true believer in God? No, now, some people who do do that, are they true believers in God? Maybe. You better believe it. And some that do do that are not. Now, this is a true believer in God. I don't believe what God can do for me, I know. And this is what I know. When it comes time to make decisions, if I do the next thing right, God takes care of my instinct. <laughs> I don't believe that. Know that. So by knowing that, does it make it easy for me to do the next thing right? Because I know if I do, guess who got me? Now, how many of y'all are so reliant on no. you get out there and you snatch and grab trying to satisfy these things and you look up and you ain't got no. nothing. Look, when I was out there snatching and grabbing, I would get some shit, but I never would keep it. You know who made sure I wouldn't? God. Because if you get this shit in a dishonest, inconsiderate, selfish way, he's going to make sure you do not keep it. Now, I'm out there trying to do the next thing right. I'm not perfect and I'm not God, but I really try to do the next thing right. And for the most part, I do. I said the most part. Now, by doing things right, I try to choose character over comfort. 
See, I try to do the next thing right, character over me snatching and grabbing comfort. Now, how many of y'all, you keep choosing comfort over character? And you get a little comfort, but you never keep it. And you never have character. When a person like me starts choosing character over comfort, that means doing the next thing right, no matter if I don't get what I want. By choosing character, guess what I have gained? Comfort. And guess who gave me that comfort? That's right. That's why I don't lose it. And he keeps giving me Now, how many of y'all have no faith in God that he's going to do that? Your faith is based in, that's why you go out there and try to snatch and grab. And you make a mess out of shit. Now, these instincts, so necessary for my existence, what they often do is drive me. They dominate me. And they insist upon ruling my life if I let them. Now, if everybody has instincts from Adam to the last baby born, that means my friends have them. That means my family members have them. That means my kids have them. That <laughs> means people I don't want to barbecue with on Sunday have them. Now, when I came into this program 20-something years ago, at that time, I had twin daughters. And my twin girls were about 11 or 12 when I came in here. What I did to them, if he would have did it to them, one of us would not be here right now. And if I'd have got the upper hand on him, I would be serving a life sentence and going, because I'd have killed him. Now, I'm running the streets of North Baton Rouge like a chicken with my head cut off. I'm doing what I want, when I want, and how I want. And I don't give a rat's ass about nobody but you. And I would tell them two girls out my mouth, I love you, girls. And they would look at me like I had about four heads and 18 eyes going, really? Then why do you treat us like you treat us? Now, I want everybody to get this in front of me, okay? Now, we're going to start right here in the front. I want you to read the first one under the social instinct. Family, too. Wanting to belong or to be accepted. Is there anything wrong with companionship? No. Nothing. What's the next one? The power to command, admiration, coveted status. Anything wrong with that? No. It's perfectly necessary and right and surely God given. Next. Anything wrong with having some good, healthy, positive self-esteem? Next. Right. An unjustified opinion of oneself, either positive, self-love, or negative self-hate. There's nothing wrong with pride, actually. You just got it in the wrong shit. And the last one? Uh, personal relationship. Our relations with other human beings and the world around. Now, at the very bottom of the social instinct, they have ambitions. Now, everybody sitting in this room has a social ambition. Ambitions are your plan for the future. Everybody sitting in here has a social plan for their future. Now, look up here. Hey, look. I, I got to tell y'all, I don't know about y'all, but when I was in the throes of a spree and somebody snorted sneezing and handed me the hitter, I hit it even harder. Look, do we have some people with colds in here? We do. Okay. 
Can we fumigate everybody and quarantine everybody? We can. But that shit you've been putting in you is you go, hey, I wonder if this needle has been cleaned. The guy who just hit the crack pipe in front of you spit all up in the son of a bitch. And you think the crack's what's guarding them. I go here. All right. We're good. <laughs> We've got to be able to laugh at something, right? All right. So we go to the security instinct. Read the first one under the security. Material. Wanting money, building, property, clothing, etc. in order to secure the future. Is there anything wrong with wanting some material things? No. The thing that's wrong is you go out and snatch and grab them. The next one, read it. Under the security. Emotional. Space upon our need for another person or person. Some tend to dominate, some are overly dependent on others. How many of y'all say y'all in a relationship? You ain't in no relationship. You're holding somebody hostage. That's what you do. You see, you either depend on them entirely too much, or you try to dominate them. And nobody can live up to your insistent demand. You can't even live up to them. <clears throat> but you expect everybody else to live up to them. How many of y'all can't live with yourself? That's why you do this. Boom. Go, 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 go. You can't live with yourself, but you expect somebody else to live with you. And when they run and flee, you get mad. And then under the security instinct, again, is ambition. Your plans for your security future. Read the first one under the sex instinct. Natural. In accordance with human nature, normal. Read the next one. Desire. Long for. Who is for the Read the next one. Read the next one. And then ambition. Uh, plan to gain material wealth, but to dominate or depend on others. Okay. Now, I want you to look up here a minute. These instincts, I'm telling you, this whole program falls down to this shit right here. Now, if you study the steps and you study the book, they talk about two things extensively. They talk about self-will and they talk about God's will. Because self-will run right is the reason your ass is in here. And the only thing that can correct it is God's will. Now, those two daughters I was telling you about, I'm running the streets of North Baton Rouge. I'm doing what I want, when I want, and how I want. And I don't care about nobody. Now, what do you think I did to their companionship? Do you think I built that up and instilled that in them like a father should or destroyed it? What do you think I did to their prestige? Their self-esteem. Now, what do you think I would do to him if he did that shit to him? It wouldn't be fun for either one of us. And the crazy shit is, they wished it was him and not me. Do y'all realize what y'all are doing to people? I promise you, if you sit through this class and you listening, you will know. Now, up to this point, I'm a firm believer that people who do not really know and understand, God takes a lot of mercy on them. But when you find out there's a better way and you don't do it, he will drop some shit on you. Ajax won't take off. I promise you. I know. <clears throat> now, there's one thing Woodlake's going to do. We're either going to sober you up and cha help change your life around, or we're going to screw your ass up so bad, you're going to wish you never heard 
of me or would like. Because I'm telling you, once you understand these and what you're really doing, and you walk out that door and continue to do the same shit, they don't make enough dough to blot out the consciousness of your intolerable situation anymore. But see, the first time I went through treatment and I learned this, I did absolutely nothing. I went back out, did the same shit. I was just sober at that point. The difference was I knew what I was doing to people. I knew. And when I put that first one in, it didn't work no more. How many of y'all have ever said some shit like this? I ain't hurt nobody but myself. If they would just leave me alone. And they leave your ass alone, you get mad at that shit too. Now, once you start to understand me, you're going to start to understand you affect everybody you come into contact with. Some way, shape, form, or another. Now, by me understanding these things and sort of how they work, can I live better than most normal people? Yeah. I can. You know, the very first time I really got this, I went, God damn, I wish they'd have taught me that in seventh grade instead of fucking woodworking class. Now, what do you think I did to my daughter? Pride. I killed it. What do you think I did to their personal relationships? Look, there's two things I remember distinctly. Their very first day of middle school, they went to a new school the very first day. And they meet a bunch of new little girls, little friends. One of them little girls goes home and tells her mama, I met identical twins. They my best friends now, and their mama goes, oh, that's so cute. What's their names? <laughs> she tells them my daughter's names, and her mama goes, oh, oh, fuck. Oh, shit. You can't hang around with those little girls. You see, the mother knows me and knows what kind of a person I really am and repeats that in front of that little girl. Next day, that little girl goes to school and repeats that shit in front of my daughter. In front of all those new little girls. So every one of their instincts got crushed. crushed. And guess who I wanted to get mad at? The mama. Well, if I was in her mama's shoes, I would have did. Same thing. Same thing. <laughs> Do you realize what you're doing to people? I'm telling you guys, this is the ticket. And when somebody's doing right, and living right, and these are being satisfied, they never dream about putting something in them to change the way they feel. Now, what do you think I did to their material security. Every other weekend, I'd go pick them up. Never miss the weekend. I'd bring them the Chuck E. Cheeses. I'd buy them bicycles and shoes and shit. And guess what I'd say? Hey, I'm a good father. Ain't nobody tell me I ain't. And guess what they didn't want? All that shit. None of that, that shit. shit. You know what they wanted? Well, yeah. Me. Me. But see, I had to tell myself that shit to live with myself. Now, my parents, both of them, if I was them, I would never speak to me again after what I did to them. Now, my mother, before she passed, got to live with me about 16 years doing this. So I made a little dent. Now, what do you think I did to my parents? Companionship, prestige, self-esteem. 
You know, my mother told me one time, she said, I always tried to figure out what I did wrong with kids. Because I got two sisters. They ain't never drank any drugs in their life. And I looked at her, I said, Mama, you didn't do nothing wrong. You actually did just about everything right. Well, for me to make my own mama feel like that, what do you think I'd do if he made her feel like that? <laughs> I'd try. See, how many of y'all, somebody else does the same shit you do and affects your people's instincts? You get mad ass. Yeah. And the crazy shit is they wish it was somebody else, somebody else instead of you. Now, when my old man retired, he started redoing Model A's. If you don't know what one of those are, they some old fucking cars. Old as shit. He and my mother joined this Model A club with a bunch of other old bitches. And they go on all these weekend trips together. They really get to know people real good. So every time they would go, you know what them old biddies would ask my mom? How's Kevin doing? Now, she had to lie or tell the truth. What do you think she did? Uh, no? No. She quit going. That's what she did. She quit going. And I'm walking around going, I ain't hurt nobody but myself. When I got a grip on these, I went, my God. What am I doing, man? I, I, I'm not like that. But the crazy shit was, I was like that. I had become the person I despised. See how many of y'all walk around here and y'all look at everybody else, what they're not doing or could be doing or should be doing when you are in the same as them. You know, I had an old man tell me one time, and he wasn't my color. Told me one time, he says, you know, boy, he said, you can learn more from people who are doing the wrong thing than you can from people who are doing right. Because what they're going to teach you is what you do not want to be like. <laughs> How many of y'all have kids in here? Y'all understand what y'all doing to them? If you, if you walk out of this door and the only thing that's changed while you've been in here is you're sober when you walk out, you're going to continue to run some dishonest, inconsiderate, selfish shit sober. <coughs> And the difference now is going to be, you know what you're doing. And when you put that first one back in, which you will, you'll have no choice. It's not going to work anymore. Because the difference now is, you know. Now, how many of y'all sitting in here? You've been listening to a little bit of this shit, you're going. Oh God, that's pretty cool. Because whenever I was sitting where you sitting and this was explained to me, it's like a light bulb went off. I went, you know what? This really ain't about me. Either. It's about me learning how to live so I won't have to find it necessary to use. And then I went, you know what? This is probably one of the best things ever happened to me. So God really knew what he was doing with me because I never would have came on my own. <laughs> y'all turn y'all's big books to page 62. Start reading for me. I want you to listen to me. I want you to read it loud. I want you to read it clear. And I don't want you to take any words out or add any to it. Read it exactly like it says. Look, read it loud like when you was hollering for dope. Woo! 
Go. Donna, first paragraph down on page 62. Fine, I'll say it loud. Self centeredness of our trouble. Now, what did it say was the root of your trouble? Self centeredness, huh? Not shooting heroin, huh? What did it say was the root of your trouble? Not drinking alcohol like a fish. What did it say was the root of your trouble? Now, how many of y'all, when y'all get back in a corner because you've made a mess out of this yet, the first thing that comes to your mind is, I got to quit Drink using. Because that's what you think it is. Not one time do you say, hey, I got to quit being a selfish, self-centered, inconsiderate, dishonest person. Not one time do you say that. Because you think it's the drinking and and how many of y'all go even further and delude yourself? You go, now that the drinking and drug is out the way, I'm a pretty good old chap. Otherwise, see the difference now? That inconsiderate, dishonest, selfish shit really comes out sideways now. Because you ain't got nothing to cover it up. Keep reading. They retaliate. Now, look up here. How many of y'all, when it comes to the instinct, you fear you're not going to get what you want? Or you fear you're going to lose something you already got? Now, with a person, it's driven by fear when it comes to the instinct. What they do next is a bunch of self deluded nonsense. They will do shit trying to satisfy these instincts in a dishonest, inconsiderate, selfish way. And they will delude themselves in believing what they just did was okay. Now, when a person is driven by fear and self delusion, the next one says, Self seeking. Flip that word around. And what makes up self? How many of y'all, you live your life and the only thing you're concerned about is your instinct and fuck everybody else's? Now, when a person like me lives like that, they screw up some shit. And when they do, the last one kicks in. It's called self pity. That's when your bottom lip pokes out and everybody, where are you from? And Lafayette can ride home on it. Now, what they're telling you is when you're driven by fear, self delusion, self seeking, and self pity, you step on people's toes. When you step on their toes, do you know what you're stepping on? Their instincts, because they got them too. <coughs> Guess what they're going to do? Retaliate. Look, how many of y'all sitting in here right now have affected people's instincts before? And when you do, do you want them to show you forgiveness, tolerance, patience? Now, when forgiveness and patience and tolerance is shown to you, how many of y'all think that is the best thing since sliced bread forgiveness? Oh, yeah. Well, when it's time for you to show somebody else forgiveness, how many of y'all go, I don't like that shit. How many of y'all have ever heard the term, turn the other cheek? You know, before I came in here, I used to take that shit literally. Like if he got up, and slap me upside this side of my face. I'm supposed to turn the other cheek and let him slap me upside this one. See, I'm well. well I ain't got this goddamn well. <laughs> what it means is when somebody affects my instinct, I turn the other cheek and show them patient, tolerance, forgiveness. Now, do I let people walk over me? No. I don't think I strike you as the kind that would. 
Now, when somebody keeps doing the same shit to me over and over and over, I'm going to do one of two things. I'm going to get them away from me as far as humanly and legally possible, or I'm going to get me away from them. But when somebody steps on my instincts, I can show another one of God's children today forgiveness. Now, how many of y'all sitting in here right now want to be forgiven? Y'all do listen to the Lord's Prayer when y'all say it before meal, right? Yeah. It says, forgive me my trespasses as I forgive those that trespass against me. See, I'm not going to be forgiven until I start to yeah. forgive. Keep reading. Sometimes they hurt us. He'll get there. Now, it says sometimes they hurt us. Look, before you understand these, you seemingly think people are doing it unprovoked. Now, nobody's ever came up to me unprovoked and hurt me. I did something to affect one of their yeah. instincts. Now, can I affect people's instincts by doing the right thing? Yes. I can. Now, I know most of y'all, when y'all get out of here, y'all will jump on Facebook to see what it is. What I've been told, I'm one of the most talked about people on Facebook. And I've never been on Facebook in my life. And somebody will come up to me and go, man, you know what they put about you on Facebook? And I go, no, but I'm sure you're going to tell me. And they tell me, and I go, oh, you know. And they go, man, you ain't mad at that? I go, no, because it's not true. Well, you ain't mad at them? No. Sick as fuck. <laughs> now, how many times... Did I care to assassinate people? How many times have I done some of the same thing? Maybe not on Facebook. See, how many of us, when we do something, it's not so big of a deal. But when somebody does it to us and our instincts get threatened, this is what we do. <laughs> <laughs> Now, I got a buddy of mine. We've been knowing each other since we were probably about 12. We grew up together, used together. I get sober, he still uses. One of the first times we got to see each other after I got out of treatment, I was about four, five, six months sober. And we started talking and I could sort of tell he was treating me like I had a damn plague. But see, what I knew was some of his instincts that got threatened. See, I'm trying to do right now. He's still stuck in stupid. So you think his self-esteem was affected? His pride? His personal relationships? His emotional security? So a lot of his instincts got threatened by me trying to do right. Do I stop doing right? Or do I just show him a little love, patience, and tolerance? How many of y'all like to think y'all pretty tolerant and open-minded? <laughs> as long as we get our people go along with what you believe. But the second somebody believes differently than you, how many of y'all shut your mind? Keep breathing. We are very good friends. And sometimes on the past year, I made decisions based on On what? On self? You share your book, don't say heroin. They don't say you make decisions based on heroin. <laughs> what is it? it says self or heroin? 
Oh, oh. Which one what, do what later? Read it. Now, how many of y'all think y'all keep making decisions based on drugs and alcohol that put you in positions to be hurt? So quite naturally, the only thing you try to change is the using part. You keep making decisions based on your instincts that later place you in positions to be hurt. Now, I want you to listen to this. You get nothing else out of this morning. I want you to listen to this. If you really love somebody, like you say you do out your mouth, every decision you make would be based on what's best for their instinct and not yours. Now, somebody who's a true believer in God, they don't believe what God can do, they know. When it comes time to them make decisions, is it easy for them to make decisions based on what's best for other people's instincts? Yes. Because they know if they do, God takes care of theirs. Now, is it easy to get to that point? Look, man, I was so used to running on self and self-will. I had a hell of a time depending on anything but. Some of y'all sitting in here right now still think self's the way to go. And look, there's only one thing that'll make you change your mind, and it's not me. It's called a thorough ass kicking, <laughs> administered by self will run riot, and then you turn into dope and soothing. Now, how many of y'all, your little solution to soothing ain't working no more? So we got to come up with another solution. Look, I tell I tell y'all this all the time. The alcoholic that I am, I'm going to get ease and comfort. I'm going to get it. And I'm going to get it from the real spirit or the spirit in a bottle, a pill, or a pipe. I'm going to get it. Now, let's say you not get it from this program. Can you stay sober for a little while? Yeah. yeah. Fuck yeah. But the point in time is going to come when you say, okay, okay. right? Yeah. You're going to go, I need some relief, which at that point, you probably do. do. <laughs> so what do you do? Relapse. Well, you don't relapse. You just use again. Now, I'm telling you guys, if you don't want that chaos in your life anymore, something got to give right here. Because if not, you're going to make a mess out of this shit again sober. Up here, you're going to start to get irritable, restless, and discontented. And up here is when the obsession is going to take over and tell you, hey, man, I know how you can get some ease and dump. See, the obsession don't tell you you're fixing to fucking end up in treatment again, does it? <laughs> hmm. no. Don't say that, does it? <laughs> Hold on, we ain't finished. Keep reading. A lot of people think basically allow the only The hell you say? Read that again. A lot of I mean, y'all come in here. Out there, in here, out there again, back in here, and you keep blaming other people for how you feel. I'm telling you, true happiness does not come from what somebody else does or doesn't do. True happiness comes from within. <laughs> 
Because guess who's within me? God. And that's where true happiness comes from. If you depend on another human being, what they do or don't do to make you happy, you know what you will never ever truly be? Happy. Guess what humans are going to do? They let you down. That's what we humans do. And some of y'all, the best humans can't possibly live up to your insistent demand. How many of y'all got some just loving ass mothers and grandmas and aunts? Just love y'all to death. And y'all pulled an absolute worst out of him. <laughs> Look, my poor mother, before she passed, my mother was one of those devout <coughs> Catholics. Every damn morning she got up and went to church. She had a fucking altar built in her house. And every morning she'd get up lighting damn candles and shit. One of the most spiritual women I've ever been around. And what I used to do to her, was pull the absolute worst out of her. And when I would pull the worst out of her, I would make her feel. Yeah. How many of us in here, we pull the worst out of people instead of the best? Comments. We ain't finished. Questions. Yes, sir. I don't believe in God. Am I hopeless? No, hell no. You may not believe in God as I understand him, or he understands him. Let me ask you this question. There's three ways. You can I want y'all to listen to this. That's actually a damn good question. There's three ways you can come at God. You can come at God as a true believer. You can come at God as an agnostic. Or you can come at him as an atheist. Now, do you know what a true believer is? What? No. True believers don't believe. They know. Now, an agnostic doesn't know, but they believe. <coughs> An atheist, most people think atheists don't believe. They believe, they just don't believe God exists. Now, out of those three, you want. Which one do you believe you want? Okay. Let me ask you this. When you get ready to do something wrong, and you know it's wrong, do you hear that little voice? Okay. And what's it tell you? Don't do that. Right? Okay, and when you block that voice out and do what you want, and the consequences start, does the voice come back again? It says what? That's right. Now, you can call that voice whatever you want, but that's the fundamental idea, God. You know, I had an old woman, never drank and drugged in her life, carry this message to me. You know what she called it? <laughs> so let's say you don't believe in God as I do or understand God as I do. When you hear that voice tell you, hey man, don't do it, and you start listening to it, I think that'd be good enough. Well, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Man, look, 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 I'm not talking about you. I'm just talking in general since I've been doing this. I've, I've worked with close to probably 20,000 people. And out of all those years, I've had two real atheists. Good. Because once it's, it's, just, once it's explained like I just explained it, some of them go. Maybe I ain't an atheist. But it don't really matter. Say that again. You need to take your own advice. <laughs> <laughs> Look, we almost we almost finished. 
Y'all turn y'all's big books to page 45. The very first paragraph down, it says lack of power. That was our dilemma. Now, I want you to look up here. If you're lacking power, you lack in power. That means you are powerless. Now, it says lack of power. That was our dilemma. So if you power less, there's only one thing that will solve being powerless. And that is wow. power. Now, how many of y'all, when y'all come in here, you don't really like or care for either one of those ideas? You don't want to go back out and keep getting what you've been getting. But you really don't want to do this and tap into some power. So how many of y'all, y'all facing a dilemma? Because a dilemma means You've got two choices and you don't fucking like either one of them. So guess what you face? Yeah. Now, how well is that working for you? Well, have you ever given that a fair shot? Okay. Now, you know what one will get you? Yeah. Huh? No. Oh, but you know? What yeah. I already got? I do know. Okay. Do you know what that one will get you? How the fuck would you know? <laughs> You've never done it. Now, have you done it? Yeah. And you know? Yeah. Have you done it? No. So you don't know. Uh, Hold up. You know? You don't know. You know? Now, is this what you want some more of? What you know? Huh? Yeah. You want some more of what you know? <laughs> okay. Then it don't leave you but one choice. Now, am I challenging you that the God of my understanding has to be yours? I ain't telling you that. And look, I don't want you to have mine. I don't want, I how selfish I am when it comes to that shit. I don't want nobody having mine. It's just personal. And it's something I've never had. I always went off somebody else's fucking idea or belief of God. I never had mine. Now, it says lack of power. That was our dilemma. In the book, it says we had to find a power by which we could live. Look, how many of you guys have not lived in a long time? You've been existing, and that shit sucks. Now, it says you got to find this power by which you can live. And then in that drunk ass italicized writing, it says that it had to be a power greater than, our greater than you. Obviously. Now, when somebody puts italicized writing in a book, that's what educated people call it. Because alcoholics call it drunk ass writing. <laughs> but when somebody puts that kind of writing in a book, they're trying to make a point. Gonna have to be a power Greater than you. Now, I want you to look to the left and the right of you. Y'all see any powers greater than you in here? No. What about less than you? No. What about equal to you? Yeah. So humans can't do it, can they? No. Now, it says I had to find a power by which I could live, and it had to be a power greater than. No. And then they back that shit up with a one word sentence. Obviously. Hey, dumbass. Obviously. Now, listen to what they fixing to tell you after that word, obviously. <laughs> it says, but where and how will we define this power? Question mark. So guess what they're going to tell you? Where and how? Somebody pick up the next sentence. Well, well, that's exactly what this book is about. Son of a bitch. <laughs> See how many of y'all come in here and y'all think that damn book because it's titled Alcoholics Anonymous is about alcoholism. That's what you think it's about. That book actually has not a damn thing to do with alcoholism. 
<laughs> the reason they talk about the obsession and the allergy is to get you to say just how you really are. And if you can ever see that, you might then become interested in, uh, and then they spring the main purpose of the book on you. That book you all are holding, that is the dumbasses version of the bigger, bigger book. They call it, uh, right. See, God made that book for people like me. How many of y'all in here have ever held a bigger, bigger book in your hand? I can remember getting thrown in jail. You know, when you get thrown in jail and you're going to be there for a while, you, you get real inspired. <laughs> and they throw you them bigger, bigger books. I, used, I got one one time, and the son of a bitch, you could barely read. How yeah. we go? But a page and a half down, after all those these and thous, I went. Now, that book right there says the same damn. It just puts it in terms that I can understand. But the bigger, bigger book is the best-selling book they ever put on paper. You know why? You know why? Huh? The most spiritual book that's ever been put on paper. Huh? So you say. Oh, it is. I know, so you say. <laughs> but I don't know if I'm going about what you say. <laughs> now, the second best-selling book that's ever been put on paper is the big book because it's the second most spiritual book that's ever been put on by and i did not say religious i said spiritual there's a big difference now we're gonna we're gonna leave with with you pondering this question what you've been doing and the way you've been believing how well is it working for you y'all have a good evening thanks kevin